quite appropriate to, to be talking to my next guest. Uh, Colm O'Brien, good afternoon. Matt McGrew, how are you? I'll get you to come just a little bit closer yeah. to the mic so that the listeners can hear no you. No problem. Uh, Colm O'Brien, it's the second time you've been on the show. Uh, now, for the benefit of uh, our two listeners, or whoever <laughs> else is tuned in, uh, for the benefit of the listeners, you are, uh, an, I've got to say, an ex-musician, but uh, I'm sure you still probably pick up the guitar now. Well, I keep my hand in, Mark, yeah. <laughs> so you're a musician that's turned artist, yes. and uh, and that's uh, that's uh, specifically what we're going to talk about. Now I would describe you. We've had you on a show before, but we didn't record it, so we're we're doing it again. But I would describe your uh, style of artistry as uh, a colorist. Yes. Yeah. Tell tell us a bit about your app. Tell us a bit about the mechanics of your app. I mean, basically the art, the art I do, I, I I take I take sort of different scenarios and scenes and. I try and then put more colour into them than maybe most artists would, just mm -hmm. to give them a different slant. Yeah. And uh, I mean, effectively, that's it. And it's all to do with balancing colour and uh, give people a different view of things that they might not have seen before. Mm -hmm. um, so where something might have been, you know, an old image of something which is dark and grey and dank, I uh, sort of bring it to life with, a, with some more vibrant colours. It, it's very true, but I'm, I'm going to probably put up a, a couple of pictures on the Facebook page, uh, some of your stuff, with your permission, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, so that uh, people can have a look and see, because some of the stuff that you do, um, people will really, really identify with it, because uh, you're, you're an Edinburgh man, yeah. and uh, a lot of the scenes that you paint are, are Edinburgh and the surrounding areas. Yeah, well, I suppose I'm, I'm actually dead fortunate in some respects, because I've got an endless source of material. Yeah. Um, Edinburgh is such a, a historic town, it gives me umpteen opportunities to, to take something that's really interesting to look at in terms of a particular scene in Edinburgh, uh, and it just gives me endless opportunities to turn it more colourful, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to living in a city that is new and modern with no character. Um, it suits me right down to the ground. For example, if you were if you were looking up uh, the Royal Mile, yes, you know it, it, it's going to be. I know they've sandblasted some of the buildings. There's some white buildings, and and but there's not a and there's not an awful lot of colour as as you would be as you're looking up towards the castle. But oh, no, you, absolutely you, not. You, but you transform that. Yeah, um, and I think the same would be. There's 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 a few cities in the country that are like that. I mean, obviously York would spring to mind. Mm -hmm. That type of thing, and. Um, and if you look really closely at some of the older buildings, then the, the, the subject matter's there for you. Yeah. Um, because you can highlight these things out in various shades and colours. And, and as I say, it just gives it a completely different slant. And people, they'll say, well, I actually know that scene, but I've never looked at it in that way before. Um, so I really don't struggle for subject matter in that respect. Now, you're a professional artist. But did did you? There's a there's a question I don't think I asked you the last time. But did did you always paint? Did you always uh, sort of dabble with it before you decided? Yeah, to? I was I was always interested in that, and I always did. You know, dabble is probably not a bad word actually. Mm -hmm. But um, but then you've the, the best way to actually to answer that question. There was a there was a an art critic stroke reporter um, interviewed me a couple of years ago. And uh, she said, I've been following your biog, and she says, I noticed that obviously you've had a, um, a career in music. Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, you know, what made you go down the music route as opposed to the art route? And she actually caught me in the hop with the question, is to be honest with you. And I mean, keep in mind, I'm 17, 18 at this point. Yeah. Uh, and I said, well, the reason I, I thought about it, I made a conscious decision that I reckon that I had a better chance of pulling the birds with a guitar than I did with a paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't think that was the answer she was actually looking for, to be honest. But it was, it was maybe not a technical answer, but uh, <laughs> very truthful. Very truthful, yes. But it is an interesting question because, you know, you know, you, you started off in yourself and you were playing with your brother Paul yeah. and uh, you entered into this, this career in music. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, to make that transition again, because that's an art, in itself, yes. you know, doing that, performing it is a, performing arts, uh, but making that transition and, and taking your expression from music, uh -huh. and then expressing yourself on the canvas. Well, the thing is, once once we decided to, to you know to to back off the music side of things, it, it leaves a creative void. Yeah, which has to be filled with something. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided then to go back to art again, um, but 
look for something different to do within that. You know yourself as a musician, Mark. You're always trying to have a different slant on what is the norm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so once I found exactly which way, what, what direction I wanted to go, um, the rest was, was easy after that. It gave me something to focus on. Um, and there's not an awful lot of difference between art and music, mm -hmm. as you well know. Yeah. Um, it's a creative process, and it's the same, ever than the same, you know, whether you're writing a song or painting a painting. So it, it's art, artistic freedom and artistic expression. That's right, yeah. And um, most artistic people are, are that way inclined, you know, moody, depressive. Frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably just described yourself as well, actually. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. But my public face is much different. Yes, I, well, I have to so, so is mine, in fairness. But one of the one of the questions that I was thinking about uh, prior to the show was that you know, it's, I suppose it's like anything else. It, you know, it must be quite a difficult world to break into what is already an established market. I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I think um, I was glad that I took the music group first and the art route second, mm -hmm. um, because um, with with the World Wide Web now and social media, the it's far easier, I mean, it's not easy, but it is easier to try and establish yourself as an artist in the, the, these times than it was, say, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, because there was, always, there was always a stigma attached to art where Ordinary people in the street thought, oh, no, I won't go into an art gallery. That's not, you know, people like me don't go to art galleries, which is absolutely not the case. More now over the last four or five years, I see people who would rather have original art on their walls than some, you know, print that they found in the market. Yeah. Uh, and it is easier now to, for people to access art and access the artists where it wasn't maybe 30 years ago. Um, where music, when we were growing up, was obviously a lot more fashionable to go into. <laughs> you know, if I had said to you on a Saturday night when we were growing up, listen, I think I'm going to become an artist, you would probably nail me to the nearest tree. <laughs> uh, where if you're going into the music industry, well, that was cool. Um, so. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it would have been the, the cool thing to do in South Edinburgh at the time. <laughs> um, we won't mention the, the, the area that we're from. But no, uh, yeah. not at all. <laughs> and the, the, other, the, the other question that I... Is actually went right out my head. Right, okay. Because that does happen. That's usually a good cue for it to be music on you. <laughs> Absolutely. I still not remembered the question I was going to ask you. <laughs> now, we, we were talking about how difficult it is to, to get involved in the art world. And mm -hmm. you said, you know, the, the, I suppose the music, uh, the music scene gave you a great grounding uh, for everything. Now, what, what would you say has sort of changed in the art world? Over, uh, over the last few years, because uh, you touched on it earlier on. Mm -hmm. You know, people didn't. You know, people generally didn't really wander into an art gallery. No. Uh, but nowadays, it's more it's more common if you're walking past something. Like, oh, I'll I'll pop in there and I'll have a look. So there isn't the stigma. What what's changed? I think, I think because it's um, because they can access art now, as I said to you, over the web and social media, they've built up a confidence. They're not frightened to walk into an art gallery anymore. Um, and suddenly they realise that, you know, access to art isn't for any social class or anything like that. They're quite entitled to go in and see and buy a painting should they wish to. But mm -hmm. also, also the, there's more and more avenues now of art being more affordable. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a fantastic thing. I mean, to be honest with you, if you can have a an affordable piece of art on your wall as opposed to a print, then obviously you're going to have an original piece of art. Yeah. Uh, and with with access to more artists than ever before, there's more and more artists willing to sell you a piece of original art at a reasonable cost. I did actually remember the question. I was, well, I was just playing with No, the, the question was about, you know, people people probably don't realise, and it happens a lot with musicians as well, mm -hmm. but people people think that you do it part-time or you do it as a hobby. Yes. And they don't realise that it's, you know, it's your full-time occupation. Yes. It is, it's what puts uh, bread on the table and, yes. and pays the bills. Yes. Yeah, but there is an element, and uh, this happens throughout the, the art world, and... Uh, you know, everybody wants something for free, or you know, can you can you give me a bit of art for my restaurant, or can you give, you know, could you come and do this for me? That's and, right. uh, I mean, I think I think the cla the best way to describe that is in the music game, and as I say, you know yourself, you're still doing it. You know, they'll they'll see you on stage for say an hour doing a cabaret show, mm -hmm. right? 
But in actual fact, that hour on stage for your cabaret show starts at four o'clock in the afternoon when you're loading your vehicle up with the equipment, you're driving for tours to get to the venue, you then got to set up all the equipment, sound check the equipment, and then it's the reverse process after you've done your show. Yeah. Where, where as an artist now, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same where I've got to, um, you know, form the composition by, you know, by one way or another, by studying, by going out to see the stuff, spending hours planning the painting, then painting it, getting it framed. Um, th there's a whole process to somebody actually looking at a piece of work on the wall. Yeah. Um, so it, it really doesn't change whether it's music or art. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, all that background work uh, culminates uh, ultimately in, uh, in putting on exhibitions. Yes. Which is brings us on nicely because you have an exhibition that's coming up in Edinburgh. Yes, it's coming up. It's on the 24th of October to the 1st of November. Uh -huh. Um, and it's in White Space Gallery in House Street. White Space Gallery in House Street. Yes. Fantastic. Um, so it's all. I'm still working towards that, obviously. Well, you did say off here that you know we'll <laughs> we'll get this uh, get this chat, but but I mean that's the thing. That's the point I was making. You said that, you know we'll have this chat, and then it's it's straight back uh, to the studio and. Uh, and, yes. and, you know, picking up the brush and uh, becoming artistic again. Yes. Do, do you find that easy to switch on and switch off? Um, no. Uh, I think... I, <laughs> <laughs> There's an answer for you. Yeah, I, th I, I think what, what can happen sometimes, I, c I can be full of um, energy and ready to continue something, and just like music, mm. I can get painter's block, yeah. and it doesn't happen and you'll have another cup of coffee and you'll stir the paintbrushes and you'll clean the palette and it still doesn't happen where other times I could paint for three days solid and be quite happy and nothing, no hitches, no hitches. So it's so just one of these things. It's just, it's just when, it, when it happens. It happens, yes. Um, but the, the, well, there's, there's a question because it, it relates to musicians as well uh -huh. uh, because the, the, the many musicians that I've worked with over the years and those that I've interviewed on the show as well, a lot yeah. of them are songwriters. And yeah. they, you know, they talk about that spark moment where they, you wake up in the middle of the night. Yes. And they, does that happen to, to you? It's quite sad, actually, when you put it that way, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is true. Uh, it, you, can, you can be driving along the road and saying, you know, I know exactly now what balance this is going to be. I know exactly where I'm going with this painting. Mm -hmm. Having spent four hours the day before get nowhere um, but there, there, there comes a point everybody has a different process um, but there comes a point in the painting for me that once I know how the paint's going to balance where my colours are going and what the subject matter is then it tends to find it's easy after that point it's getting to that stage where you know where everything's going to fit yeah. um, and I suppose it's like verses and choruses of a song um, no difference See, it's the technicalities that fascinate me. It's a, it's a fascinating subject uh, on the art and, and just, you know, uh, bringing it all together. Yes. I suppose, you know, when you have, a, you have a look at a painting and you think, yeah, it's quite nice, yeah. but you don't think about everything, all the, the technicalities that go into no, it. No, and I haven't, I haven't made the complete transition yet. You know I mean? Obviously, I'm not walking about with a cravat and a goatee beard. Or, <laughs> <you know? laughs> so I've still got that bit to go, Mark. You know? yeah. I can't wait to see that. I'll get to see. <laughs> Can I just thank you for uh, for coming in and explaining art? I feel like Claudia Winkleman. Uh, she, <laughs> well, uh, on with her... anybody listening, you're looking like her as well, actually. Yes, is that like... <laughs> it is the dress. I'm sorry, and, and the boots are quite nice as well. I've got to say, <laughs> exactly. uh, but it's, it's a fascinating subject. I, I do find it fascinating. Uh, I'm sure that the people of Middle Lothian have found it interesting. Tell us again about the the exhibition. Uh, the exhibition's on the 24th of October to the 1st of November. At White Space Gallery in House Street. And if you like a bit of colourist art, that is the place to go and get your ultimate part of uh, artwork for your living room or for your bedroom or whatever you want to put. You can put it in the kitchen if you want. And uh, I'm going to put a couple of pictures up on Facebook. Uh, you can see them and then pop along to the exhibition. Colm O'Brien, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Matt. True.